Hey guys, welcome back to Review A Day. Uh, so before I get into the main review, just a little tease for you guys. Uh, we did see The Dark Knight last night, and there is going to be a review of it for you guys, for myself, Justin Pete, on the stack on Friday. So stay tuned for that. We're going to do a Batman Spectacular show. You'll see some of the stuff we've been talking about here on Review A Day. Um, and I'm not going to spoil the movie other than to say it's awesome. So, on with the review. Today we're going to talk about a classic, which is Crisis on Infinite Earths. So, this is one of those things that, you know, it didn't really launch the mega crossover, but it, it came out the same summer as Secret Wars, when uh, Marvel was doing the same sort of thing. The idea of this book was to reboot the continuity of the DC Universe. Obviously, in the long run, we've seen that that was a massive failure because it didn't do anything and they've completely reversed everything that happened on Crisis of Infinite Earths. However, it took me a long time to read this book. Uh, George Perez, uh, Marv Wolfen, both classic authors, gigantic series. Here's the best thing about this book. Here's the reason to read this book if you haven't read it. It is so dense. Every time I read a crossover like a Secret Invasion right now, for example, where we're four issues in and so far the Avengers have gotten to the Savage Land and the Scrolls have gotten to Times Square and that's taken four issues so far. And now that it's badly done, but you look at Crisis of Infinite and the status quo of the entire universe from the beginning of the first issue to the end of the first issue is entirely different. And every issue is so packed with detail and things going on that 12 issues by modern standards, feels like 36 or 48 issues. Um, whether that's a good thing to you or not is obviously up to your own discretion. For me, I like it. I like a lot of stuff going on. The plot moves really quickly. Huge, great things happen. There's stuff that happens about a half or three quarters of the way through that would be the climax to any other series, but there's even more and more, and they keep piling it on. Um, and, you know, because... Uh, for those of you who have read Infinite Crisis but didn't read Crisis on Infinite Earths, or also throw out Sinestro Core War, the uh, the last page of Sinestro Core War, the special, uh, when they revealed that the Anti-Monitor is back, spoiler, you kind of all already knew that, um, it's such a big deal because you read this book and he is such an amazing, gigantic, unstoppable villain that he basically eats universes nonstop. That, that's how strong, that's how powerful he is. And uh, it's fun, you know, it's... Comics should be fun like Crisis on Infinite Earths is. It's a massive, globe-spanning, universe-spanning crossover, but it just feels like a good time throughout. If I have one big quibble with the book, uh, it panders into one of my least favorite things, which has soured me on a lot of launches for comics, which is uh, they have things like uh, they launch new characters in here, but it's always as is DC's want, is an ethnic character. So uh, in instead of Dr. Light, there's now, I am the new female Japanese Dr. Light. Do with that what you will. Maybe they did some good things with the character and whatnot over time, but it's a really awkward way of launching the character. And it's certainly when, you know, for example, with Infinite Crisis, when uh, the Blue Beetle Scarab landed in, uh, well, I'm going to get this totally wrong, when it landed in Texas, and uh, there were a bunch of Latino kids who found it. I was like, oh, here we go again. Granted, that turned out to be great, and Blue Beetle is amazing, so it really comes down to what the author, what the team is going to do with it. But it's such a silly thing to launch characters out of this big crossover. They're doing the same thing with uh, Nick Fury's Secret Commandos, or whatever they're calling them. Um, and it's just, I don't know, I understand, I understand why you do it, but it's a little transparent in terms of the business which is not my favorite thing. I would rather you just go about telling stories and telling good stories. And if there's a character that pops, let them pop. And if there's no character that pops, don't let them pop. I don't know. I ran out of sentences at the end there. But point being, if you've never read Crisis on Infinite Earths, it is a classic for a reason. Is it the best story ever? Absolutely not. But it's a really very well-done crossover. And if you want to see what a good, massive, gigantic crossover with some great emotional beats uh, looks like, check this out. Uh, that's it for this time, and I will see you guys tomorrow.